Hundreds of handheld pagers exploded near simultaneously across Lebanon and in parts of Syria on Tuesday, killing at least eight people, including members of the militant group Hezbollah and a girl, and wounding the Iranian ambassador, government and Hezbollah officials said. Officials pointed the finger at Israel in what appeared to be a sophisticated, remote attack that wounded more than 2,700 people at a time of rising tensions across the Lebanon border. The Israeli military declined to comment. Lebanon's health minister, Faras Abayad, said at least eight people were killed and 2,750 wounded 200 of them critically. Iranian state-run Erna News Agency said that the country's ambassador, Mojtaba Amani, was superficially wounded by an exploding pager and was being treated at a hospital. Photos and videos from Beirut's southern suburbs circulating on social media and in local media showed people lying on the pavement with wounds on their hands or near their pants pockets. One of the most predictable features of Russia's war against Ukraine has been the apocalyptic threats. From Russian ruler Vladimir Putin, every time Western leaders have tried to boost the firepower of the Ukrainian army, writes Kon Koflin, the Telegraph's defense and foreign affairs editor. According to him, Putin's pathetic rhetoric is designed to intimidate Western leaders into abandoning their pro-Ukrainian stance. The author recalls that the tactics of the bully autocrat began days after Russia launched its so-called special military operation to conquer Ukraine. At the same time, in order to deter Western interference, Putin warned that the West would face dire consequences if it supported Ukraine's fight for freedom. He has since made numerous references to Russia's massive nuclear arsenal, typically when NATO leaders are considering ways to improve their military support, such as providing tanks and F-16 fighter jets. One of his most explicit threats came in February after French President Emmanuel Macron unilaterally proposed deploying NATO forces to the Ukrainian battlefield. Putin responded by warning that such a deployment risks a nuclear conflict and the destruction of civilization. Coughlin writes, he stresses that nothing has come out of these threats, not least because China, on whose support the Kremlin relies to keep the Russian economy afloat, has made it clear that it will not tolerate Moscow using any nuclear weapons. While Putin talks, Western arms shipments continue to flow into Ukraine, greatly enhancing its ability to defend itself against Russian aggression. That's not to say the Russian leader's remarks haven't had an impact on the debate over military support for Ukraine. Joe Biden, in particular, has been spooked by Putin's threats and has often delayed providing vital military equipment for fear of triggering a broader escalation of the conflict, the article says. At the same time, according to the journalist, Putin has good reason to fear Ukraine's use of Western-made storm shadow long-range missiles to strike targets inside Russia as they could destroy 250 Russian bases near the border that are used for almost daily attacks on Ukraine's civilian infrastructure. If the Ukrainians can consolidate their recent gains in Kursk, Putin will indeed be in trouble. So, empty threats are needed again. In truth, the Russian leader desperately hopes that Donald Trump will win the presidential election in November and thereby save his own skin by brokering an agreement to end the war, hopefully one that leaves Moscow in control of large swathes of Ukrainian territory. Such an outcome would be disastrous. The window of time to press the Ukrainians' superiority is becoming increasingly narrow. Western leaders must seize the initiative and let Ukraine win this war. The author concludes, Russian leader Vladimir Putin recently threatened Britain and the United States with war in response to Ukraine's likely permission to strike Russia, a move he said would significantly change the very nature of the conflict by forcing Moscow to respond.